And welcome back again to Comic Universe. Back here again, finally, after what <laughs> shit happened. Um, for a, it's been a while. Yeah. I've made my triumphant return. Bow before me. <laughs> you may, uh, you, uh, your lord and master has returned. Kiss the royal ring. Where the, where the fuck's the ring? <laughs> but no, it's, um, it's been a while. Um, I want to thank C-Dubs here for, um, really coming through um and doing all the solo vids and yeah it's back to business as usual right back in the saddle again i'd scream the song from what was it, it it's it's ac it's aerosmith who did back in the saddle right right i think so okay but i'm not gonna scream because i'm not steven tyler and i don't do drugs don't do drugs kids but no we uh psa for the day <laughs> i've done my job <laughs> Um, but no, we're here to talk about uh, Dream Team. We're going to be doing two back-to-back, -back, um, both Marvel teams. And yeah, our first one is going to be X-Force. It's actually, we're going to do this for du Deadpool 2. We were like, I remember, like, we were driving back to my house, and I, right. and I went, like, fuck! <laughs> and you were like, what, what? We forgot to do with the X-Force team for Deadpool 2. It was like, shit! Oh, well. So Better late than never, right? Yeah. So, yeah, um... We're going to talk, if, you, if this is the first time watching Dream Team, this is basically where we take a team and talk about how we would do it um, and what members we would put on the team and how we would go about, this team would be formed and what would they do. Is that right, right, exactly. So, uh, I guess I'll go first. Sure, sure. Um, so, my idea for X-Force is that it'd be much like with the um, Wolverine era of X-Force with um, the, uh, what was it, like X him and X-23 and all mm -hmm. that, but it would be more like this team is put together... Um, to in the same reason of hey there are people out there who really want to hurt mutants and we can't just stop them day in day out so we need a team that can put them down permanently you need to be that team eric so it would be cyclops who would be back you marvel for still killing him but yeah it would be cyclops or even like emma who again bs that i could go on and on about how much i hate inhumans versus x-men i really but one of the biggest things i really hate is making emma just yeah i'm evil now or her love did die, so... Well, yeah, but she went, like, crazy 60s-era villain crazy. Like, whatever. Minus the mustache twirl. But basically, yeah, either one, someone like a high-ups in the X-Men was like, look, we need someone, who, a team that can take down these threats. And Magneto, who's, you know, still good at the time, you know, he's still good, he would be like, look, I can do it. I, you know, I am at peace with killing these people, with killing people, and I know the X-Men have a problem with that, but I'm at peace with it. Let me put this team together. So Eric would be the one who would put this um, X Force team together because, like I said, he's he's willing to go that extra mile, course, yeah. and he knows that because he's been on the X Men so long. He'd be like, "Look, I know you guys are not going to be cool with what I do, so it's better you don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to make sure our people are safe, and this is the only way I know how." So I think the X Men would be like, "Okay, just don't don't tell us anything." <laughs> Right. You know, don't show, don't tell. Yeah, because you are technically still a criminal, you know. <laughs> right, as bad as they come, to be honest with you. Yeah, so Magneto, he's got years of leadership experience. I think he would know who to pick on this team right. to have, like, I know you can get the job done, essentially. Yeah. Right. So, there you go. Uh, Magneto is the leader of my team. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, for me, my first pick, uh, the leader as well, is going to be Cable. Now, the, the setup for my team... Um, Basically, it's what Cable is good at, kind of traveling through time and stopping certain things. Uh, the concept of my team would be basically time traveling, stopping certain events that have caused other events, obviously, in their timeline to go to shit, essentially. Um, so he puts together a team of people he can trust to help him get the job done. Um, and that wouldn't necessarily be missed in the current timeline of things that aren't super important... Um, you know, to the way the world works. Someone like a Wolverine, if he was obviously missing, you know, he couldn't help the Avengers when they needed. He wouldn't be there for the X-Men when they needed. So uh, that's kind of the concept behind the team. So, yeah. And my, cool. my team leader would be Cable. Pretty traditional, but it would be Cable. He's an ultimate badass, weapons, 
specialist, military background. He knows how to get it done, you know, and years of experience leading a team as well. So, I guess back to me? Yes, sir. All right. My next member is Domino, another core member of X-Force. She's been in a lot of incarnations. In fact, I'd love to have a joke where she'd be like, Magneto would come to her and be like, let me guess, X-Force, right? Be, like, she's been in so many incarnations of the team, she'd be like, yep, figured. <laughs> right, yeah. So, I think... Just my luck. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and Eric, Eric would give her this look of, oh, God. Right. Um, so Domino again another major X-Force member and I was like I gotta have her on this team because um, she'd also be at peace with like horribly killing people of course and Eric well, would be really, a mercenary so yeah. I don't know um, and I think Eric would be very at peace with that um, he knows that her luck abilities would play very well um, would play very well for the team as well as she's an excellent you know hands to hand hand to hand fighter as well as marksman she is brutal when she wants to be and she can like distance herself like detach herself from the killing right so, That's true. so I think yeah, Magneto would be like, I know you've been part of X Force teams before. Guess what? You're part of another one. And she'd be like, I'm not gonna say no to you, right? And and to be honest, you know, not to mark her as someone who is easy, but she has been known to kind of sleep slip around. And Magneto has done it from time to time. And you, you uh, honestly think she that, she tried to hit on on Magneto? I, come on, she she has this thing for strong men, and Magneto's as strong as they come. And Honestly, I, I think she'd be hitting on the other guy that'd be on my team. Could be there too. I, mean, I wouldn't put it past her to be. But honestly, I, like Magneto, like he's he's a silver fox. You can't deny it. <laughs> That's true. I mean, he's he, he's had his fair share. You know. Yeah, you know, he had Rogue for yeah. in, in Age of Apocalypse. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that would be kind of an interesting dynamic, and maybe some even if they don't hook up, this the sexual tension would be kind of interesting to write. So and she'd be like, like after a big battle or watching him like just kill a bunch of people, she'd be like. I really, really want to do something really nasty with him. Right, right. right. <laughs> Just totally turned on his covered head to toe and blood or vice versa. He could be looking at her and seeing how she does her thing and he could just be like, what's hmm. going on with these feelings, you know? Yeah. It would be pretty entertaining, to be honest. I think, like, it would be Domino coming on to him. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And he'd be like, I, ma ma'am, I, madam, I am over, uh, I'm in my 60s. Right, I could be your grandfather. <laughs> that's kinky. And then she, she would probably that's kinky. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds uh, this is really dirty, but if you've known the comic and that the comic and that right. character that long, then you know this is this and, is part of the course for her. And we and, and, and we definitely don't mean it in any disrespectful way to her or women that are promiscuous or have sex. It is your life; do as you will. You know that's a part of the her character. It's just who she is, and yeah. it's fine. I mean, that's not a problem whatsoever. She ain't married, so she ain't cheating, right? That's yeah. the way I look at it. Neither is her, <laughs> right? Exactly. So. Uh, moving on, mine, um, second pick, the muscle behind the team, pretty standard character to this team as well, um, a juggernaut in his own right, Warpath, uh, the Indian with the, are you okay buddy, <laughs> uh, the Indian with the blades, you know, and he can just kind of wreck shit, basically, he's going to be the powerhouse of the team, taking on any tough foes, hand to hand if need be. Um, plus with the expansion of him being able to kind of fly and things like that, that's pretty cool. Um, he's just aesthetically awesome and pleasing and he kind of fits on this team and he's also someone again that in the main continuity of what's going on in the X-Men world, he isn't someone that's terribly needed or has any yeah. current thing keeping him. And he's cool with like doing the really oh, absolutely. horrible stuff. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He puts his knives to the test for sure. Animantian knives, good to go. So... Definitely Warpath, number two. All right. So my next pick is another X-Force core member who's been on a few incarnations here, especially Rick Remender run, and you already know who I'm talking about. That is Fathom X, who, master assassin, the a genetically altered human being. Well, he's a mutant. Well, right. It's a, it's a weird slope with, with Fathom X, honestly, but Fathom X is a excellent marksman, a deadly hand-to-hand -hand fighter, and someone who's really okay with killing a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. And I love how he also has his own ship, like, you know, organic ship he has a mental connection with. So that could be the, the X-Force's, you know, mode of transportation. And I think, like, he would be like, yeah, I've done this before. I'm just going to double my prices. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've done this shit before. So I did this with Logan, and I did this with um, Colossus. So... I'm going to double my rates this time. I'm not going to be stupid like I am. Right. 
It's like, I don't care if you are the master of magnetism, I hope you are the master of a very big check. <laughs> right, okay, I think it's all the pennies you need. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was pretty okay with gunning down a child, I mean, granted, the child was Apocalypse, so... Again, I think that is true. Yeah, so I think Magneto. He's also he's perfect for what Magneto wants on the team. Of course, yeah. And if you're gonna go the route of killing any child, doesn't matter what the child is gonna be capable of. You, you need someone who can really like right. walk away from that at peace with it, you know. Right. Uh, so moving on, my number three. Um, I got really big into comics in the '90s, regardless of all the cheese that and big beefy guys and all the spikes and leather and bullets galore, if you will. Um, and another member to this team who is very familiar with the likes of Warpath and Cable is going to be Shatterstar. And after the unforgiving way they treated him in the Deadpool movie, I have to give him some. I was actually quite excited to see that he was in this movie. And just as I was excited he was there, spoiler alert, he wasn't. <laughs> uh, we're not going to go into what exactly happened for anyone who hasn't seen the film, but he's there one minute and gone. You might say he was... Cut out of the film. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 I mean, he jumped for what he believed in, and that was it. It was the end of it all, if you will. Uh, but no, he's an awesome character. If you really know the character, he's a weapon specialist, a martial artist. Um, he's just kind of cool. If you if you like that '90s vibe, anything about the '90s, he kind of just screams '90s to me. So he's when I think of my era of of comic characters, he's one of the major guys. Um, all three of these guys that I've mentioned so far kind of just scream this team, so I just kind of wanted to bring some familiarity to the team, as well as kind of maybe spice it up and a little bit. We'll see some. All right. So my next one is Wolfsbane. Um, okay. I think uh, just a good brawler, excellent tracker, and someone like Magneto could be like, so you got a scent or where they could be or something like that. And again, I think she wouldn't mind putting her claws and teeth through people. Yeah, she's done it from time And she was actually, like, part of the New Mutants, which uh, Magneto led for a while. So I think it would be a nice little, like, get-back-together kind of thing. That would be pretty cool. I mean, like you said, she's an excellent tracker, so, I mean, trying to get away from her is pretty much not happening. Yeah. I mean, the only uh, uh, there's very few people who I would put above her, uh, Logan, Craven. But other than that, she's probably top five, I would say, in the MCU. So, yeah. yeah. So moving on, uh, my number four is going to be Forge. Um, he's a character that has kind of been known to go around throughout time, from time to time, and um, basically can create anything for nothing. And he's definitely someone who Cable could find some serious use for. You know, we need a particular something to get through this particular problem, or he could be what creates the time jumps that allows yeah. them to go between. He's basically MacGyver. Right, right. Yeah. exactly. He's the MacGyver of the X-Men. Exactly. Plus, his Indian background is kind of cool as well. Um, you know, him and Warpath might be able to share some of that, you know, their heritage with each other. And just to share a lot, you know, light on American Indians in any regard is pretty cool. So, definitely Forge would be another character. Yeah. All right, so back to me. Yeah. Um, my next pick is Sauron, the uh, pterodactyl. The big giant eye? No? No. Yeah, it uh, just had to, didn't you? I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Sauron is a giant pterodactyl man mutant with psychic powers. You ever you ever find it, you ever realize how they came up with that character? You ever found out how they did that? No, I didn't. So back in the when the comics were not allowed to the comic code basically, they weren't allowed to portray vampires and they weren't allowed to portray certain things in children's superhero comic books. This was their way of kind of finding a way to put a animalistic monster with vampiric type powers in a story basically and get around the comics code so uh, that's basically how he came to be if you will yeah, yeah it's pretty well cool. points for originality and yeah. naming him at, and literally naming him after lord of the rings oh, character right. uh and he's still alive like he's just kicking it in the savage land and yeah i think um again he's a monster if magneto could just unleash you know he could just turn on people and he'd be like just feed me that's right. all yeah you know. He would also kind of, he could play very easily as a um, Starscream type character as well, which could bring some dynamics to your team too, you know? Yeah. Someone who from time to time has been known to want to be a bigger threat than he actually is. 
and maybe lead a team yeah. or run. And I think Vegeta line. would put would like crush that. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, same thing with like the Meg Megatron Starscream. Like he puts him in his place every yeah. time, but doesn't stop him from trying yeah. to. And the other thing is like um, he's intelligent. He's like he would be the scientist of the group. I was thinking Dark Beast for the team, but I was like, no, nah, Dark Beast. No one is like Dark Beast would it would definitely just f the team over on the grounds of I just want to. But Sauron, as long as you keep him fed, I think as long as Magneto sure. like keeps him on a tight leash, he could be that sign like that the anti beast, you know. Right. Plus the fact of having another bad guy on the team, villain on the team, could put some like good like the heroes, if you will, even regardless of them being murderous heroes, they're still heroes nonetheless, you know, kinda on edge, always weary about him, type of thing. And I'm sure Sauron would love to taste some of the people on the team as well, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty cool though. And it's like he would just be doing horrible things in his lab, and he'd be like, "Hey, um, Ka um, his name's Carl, right? Carl yeah. Lycos. Uh, hey, uh, Lycos, um, what you doing? I'm having lunch. God help me! <laughs> it's fighting back. <laughs> right, and it'd just be one of those things where you guess you got to turn your head and look away. Yeah. So yeah, awesome pick, awesome. I definitely when I saw that, I was like, shoot, now I can't use him. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, so moving on, sticking with some more, uh, you know, sh someone who has some background with this team, but an e explosive expert, if you will, in her own right. And she may have the worst name in comic book history, okay, and she may be nothing more than your stereotypical big boob blonde girl back in the day, but she's much more than that to me, you know, and it's Boom Boom. Um, at first, when you look at her and you hear Boom Boom, you're kind of maybe thinking, is, are they talking about the T or the A, you know, because she's pretty well endowed when they drew her, especially back it in the It was Liefeld, what do you of expect? Of course, yeah, I was trying to stay away from bashing him, but it's what he's kind of known for back then, um, well, even kind of now, but more so back then. But she's someone that doesn't get, get enough shine. She's definitely, I think, more useful than the likes of a Jubilee, prior to being a vampire, if you will. Um, and I always wondered why she never got a bigger push or was more involved in things. And I get it. She's just kind of a side character, but I would want her in there. Plus again, you know, Cable needs something to go boom. Who better? Right? No pun intended. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't she and Cable have a thing? Yeah, they did back in the day. I remember her. Cable Domino. Cable, Cable's kind of like Wolverine. He kind of. Puts it in whatever hole he can find to, you know, not to sound like a pig, but th he kind of does his thing. When too. you're a time traveling mutant messiah, I think you know you you kind of get whatever woman you want. Right, like, pretty much. Right. Yeah. Plus, he's badass, you know, Silver Fox, like you put it as well. <laughs> My gun's not the only thing that's big. <laughs> or uh, could he's overcompensating. people. <laughs> or he's overcompensating. You know, right. that could be the case. I mean, those guns are ridiculously huge. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we are terrible people here. We know. Uh, so, I guess moving on. Yours, number six. Yeah, my final pick is Rachel Summers. This uh, one threw me for a loop. I was like, interesting. Yeah, okay. Rachel. Cable's, uh, I guess you could call, him, uh, call it her half-brother. I mean, half-sister, right? Technically, it's... Well, technically, yeah. But because also, th they have the same he's, dad. He's also kind of... Yeah, I guess you're right. No, that is what it would be. Yeah, yeah. same death. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, 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 I know the the Summers family is just screwed beyond all. Like the family tree is more like a twisted I root. Even, I don't even know if they do. They even know of each other. No, they know each other. Yeah, they work. Do, do they know they're related? Yeah, like she. If I remember right, she raised him um, when he had the techno Tech Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that's going back. Yeah, that's how we got strife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You right. see, I know uh, my X Men. It's, it 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 took some time. It's been too many years, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember. Yeah. So, um, Rachel would be the team's uh, psychic. You know, she's a very powerful telepath. She had the Phoenix Force for a while. I think it, um, she would be on this team, but she would be like the heart of it. Like we're surrounded by all these killers and monk and people who are very at peace with murdering people for you know for money or you know for fun. And but I think like. She would be there to kind of rein the uh, Magneto, and like she would have met in Eric's ear most of the time. Like Eric, we're going too far. Like you need to stop. And th I think there would be some friction between the two, but Magneto would acknowledge that she's a you know he needs her power on that. 
And I think, like, sometimes it'll be like, okay, what, what do you think we should do? Or something like that. Because the other ones on the team would just be like, let's kill them. Right. And sometimes killing isn't the answer. And you, you would need somebody to be like, let's, instead of going in guns a-blazing, let's think let's of think of yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, Rachel can easily, like, mentally link everyone up. Um, but I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, she can. Justice right there. Yeah, but, yeah, like. That's what Martian Manhunter does and all that. Yeah. And Jean did that. So Rachel can just mentally link everyone up and be like, she'd have to be like, Eric, take your helmet off real quick. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Force of habit. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, good pick. Absolutely. One that, again, I didn't see coming initially. So uh, definitely a pretty cool one. Yeah. And I guess with such a bloodthirsty group, group, you know, you do need someone to kind of pull it back. Sometimes, because again, yeah. you go. But I think situation. like she would. I think because of the timeline she came from, she'd also be willing to kill. But I think at the same time, she'd be like, "Guys, we need to chill for a moment." Right. And everyone would be kind of like, "Okay, listen, you're from some jacked up timeline, so why don't you let us handle this?" And then she like mentally blasts someone, and be like, "Oh, I'm oh, I'm the damsel in distress." Right. And they're on the ground like, like "Oh, okay, okay." Yeah, she's pretty cool, too. I mean, aesthetically, I mean, she's, you know, fiery red hair, so it's, it's always yeah. kind of stands out on the pages, you know? So, yeah. absolutely. I'm so, there you go. That. That's my uh, X-Force team. What is your final member? My final member is one of my all-time favorite characters. Really? No love whatsoever, and it's one of my favorite characters to play with in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and that is Mero. I just, the, she's always been someone that just, I love the concept of her being hideously deformed at times but yet still something pretty about her you know depending on the, the the artist if you will just she's this tortured soul that's constantly in pain with the bones piercing from her and i needed someone along the lines of cable who if he needs something to get done she's someone who's going to do it she wasn't afraid to go toe to toe wolverine and basically put it to him you know so uh, she's just someone who gets no love, no shine anymore, and I would want to kind of give that back to her. I think they had something with her, and then she kind of got lost to, in the shuffle, if you yeah. will. So, and and you know, who doesn't love a Morlock? You know, yeah. they don't they don't get no shine as a whole. So it'd be pretty cool to have her on the team. Yeah. So that would make me on my number six, Marrow. Right. And adds another you know female perspective to the team to that nature as well. Yeah. So that's my team for X-Force, and there you guys have it. Yeah, there's our X-Force team. Just comment below, who would you have on your X-Force team? Yeah, let us know for sure, and, and the concept behind it. Like, what are they doing? What are they, what's their mission, if you will? Why are they banding together? Yeah. Uh, let us know in the comments below. And guys, until next time, see you once more in the universe.